Hi everybody. Today we do the EcoDriver consumption test loop with a Hyundai Tucson NX Trendline 1.6. Damn, let me start again. Hyundai Tucson NX4 Trend. Ah, I insert the full name and I just call him Robert from now on. It's easier. I've already done the electric range test and you'll find the link at the end of this video or in the description below. Robert did very well there and in this video we have a look at the efficiency of the drivetrain. Hence doing this 75 km loop with empty battery. That's 42 miles. At the range test the battery engine kicked in at 14% state of charge. Yes, here we start with 13% but 0 km of electric range. I guess this is a basic filling of the battery which is kept in order to have some electric power in case it is needed. For example for accelerating or steep hills. This car is equipped with a 1.6 liter 180 horsepower four cylinder engine supported by a 66.9 kilowatt electric motor. The unladen weight is 1841 kilograms, just over 4000 pounds. We have a six speed torque converter on automatic gearbox. Ah, now you see me. So the camera is working now. We have exceeded the rated electric distance for this vehicle quite easily. I have the suspicion that in the electric mode two gears are used. I have no com confirmation for that yet, uh, but I'll try to find out. There are some other cars in the market which do the same. For example, the Volvo XC40, which makes sense with a small electric motor, which becomes quite inefficient and doesn't have enough power and torque at higher revs. What this car is doing, such as most plug-in hybrid vehicles, is to increase state of charge when it's very low. This leads, of course, to a higher consumption at the beginning of a ride and subsequently to the widespread opinion that plug-in hybrids are inefficient and that they consume much more fuel than a traditional ICE drivetrain. My mission is to prove that this is not the case. Yes, at the beginning consumption is a bit higher, but later on we benefit from this stored energy and we have capacity for some electric distance. I want to show that plug-in hybrids are very efficient vehicles, even if you don't plug them in to charge the battery. I still urge you to charge them externally as much as possible, I do it as well. But if you have no chance to do so, you still drive a very efficient car. Especially on a route like ours here, where we have a longer descent around 6 km 4 miles, plug-in hybrids are normally more efficient than full hybrid vehicles, as the battery has more capacity to store the full amount of regenerative energy produced. In this case, I guess around 11 to 12 kilowatt hours. Whereas batteries of full hybrid can only contain half a kilowatt hour, maybe one, and then they are full, and the rest of the braking has to be done by the foundation brakes or the petrol engine. So let's see what we can achieve, and I'll talk to you later. the end of the climb we have 13.1 liters per 100 kilometers. Not too bad for a 1.8 ton vehicle. There are much more videos to come on this channel and most videos I've already done for my German channel so I can tell you that compared with similar vehicles that's yeah that's quite okay. We are approaching the rolling hills now as I already said in previous videos. Here I try to use the change of gradient to build up momentum. If it's going uphill, I try to avoid accelerating or maybe even holding the speed at all costs when I see or know that a downhill or flat section is following. It's going down now. We are in electric mode. The car would regenerate, means brake, a little bit. In this case, enough not to accelerate, so I press the, um, so I press the accelerator just a little bit to reduce the regen and accelerate without any additional energy.
At the end of the rolling hills we have 9.2 liters per 100 kilometers. You have seen how we have been blocked by some motorists who drive very slow, but also very inefficient. In this case, some tourists. On downhill sections it is important to brake gently with hybrids, as there is only a limited regenerative capacity of the small electric motor. You see here the eco gauge. Rather quickly I reach the end of the charge section, which indicates that once you exceed the brake force needed, the foundation brakes are used and potential regenerative energy is wasted. At the end of the descent we have 6.3 liters per 100 kilometers. When driving downhill keep in mind that with all kinds of drivetrains energy is lost once you step on the accelerator, except full hybrids where the battery is full rather quickly anyway. So it makes sense to obey the rules of eco driving on the way down as well. In this case try to use momentum you gain on a steeper section to coast over a flatter section without the need of having to put your foot on the gas. With the Tucson it's a bit tricky to keep the accelerator pedal position where the vehicle is coasting uh, because this pedal is quite sensitive. We now have an electric range of 3 km and a state of charge of 24%. End of country road, 4.7 liters per 100 kilometers. On this motorway, Robert is not allowed to go faster than 100 kilometers or 62 miles per hour. Pure electric vehicles here are allowed 130 kilometers an hour due to uh, environmental reasons. At the end of the motorway we have 5.0 liters per 100 kilometers. I noticed that the vehicle is charging a bit most of the time and then the battery engine switches off for a couple of hundred meters and the car is going in electric mode. I'm not really sure whether this is the most efficient way of using energy, especially as electric motors lose their advantage in efficiency with higher speeds. They, they, don't get me wrong, they are still more efficient than the petrol engine, but I think the electric energy is better used at lower speeds, as it is done, for example, with the Volvo plug-in hybrids. I have noticed this with other cars as well, for example, the Honda Jazz. 
Now, as we approach the city traffic, we have zero electric range, as it was wasted on the motorway. Coming to the end of our fuel economy test with Robert, aka Hyundai Tucson NX and so on, on the Eco Travel Loop and we see here 5.0 liters per 100 kilometers. So now let's analyze this. Well, now let's have a look at uh, the summary of our trip with Robert on the Eco Travel Loop. You see here the individual and overall consumption. 5.0 liters per 100 kilometers is not too bad, but it's also not the best result. Uh, soon uh, other tests with uh, other plug-in hybrids will come here, come, and there are some who do better. Some are worse, yes, but uh, there's a bit missing to be top for Hyundai in the 
in the plugin hybrid section. In my opinion, there are three main reasons for that. Number one, the engine is too small. We have a 1.6 liter engine and in order to produce the power that is needed, the engine needs to rev too high, in my opinion, most of the time. We see similar vehicles uh, from other manufacturers and especially those who are very efficient, they all have two, maybe even two and a half liter engines. Um, in fact, the two most efficient ones have two and a half liter engines uh, with the same size and type of vehicle. Why? Why does the engine need to rev high in order to produce the power? Yes, due to its size, uh, it doesn't produce enough torque at lower revs, so you need high revs, and high revs mean high consumption. Number two, um, the gearbox. It only has six speeds, and uh, this means the engine is not running at its most efficient uh, area for most of the time. We see with the most efficient hybrids, they use CVT gearboxes, um, which keep the keep the engine revs at the at the uh, most efficient point, basically all the time the engine is running. And number three, the general regime, how the whole hybrid drivetrain works, how and when and what type of energy is used. Uh, when we left the motorway, the battery was empty, so we didn't have any energy stored for city traffic where it would be most efficient to drive electrically. And subsequently, I noticed the vehicle accelerated uh, for the first couple of 10, 50, 100 meters with, with the combustion engine doing the work. And, and only afterwards, the, electric, uh, the, the petrol engine stopped working and the, and the electric motor took over. In my logic, it should be the other way around, as we see with almost all other manufacturers. Um, one thing I also noticed, um, not on this trip, but uh, from other users and uh, what I know about this vehicle is when it gets colder and the heating is on, uh, and when you're driving in electric mode, the petrol engine starts running in order to produce some heat. And I'm, I'm sorry, but that's really not a very efficient way to heat the to heat uh, the interior of a vehicle. Even if there is no electric heater, um, there are some other more efficient ways of uh, producing heat. Uh, most other hybrid, uh, plug-in hybrids have a, a separate heater which produces heat by burning fuel but without the engine running, which I think is much more efficient than using a 1.6 liter engine to produce a little bit of heat for the interior. Electrically, I think Hyundai is leading HMC are, I think, um, on the very top of this market uh, with Hyundai, Kia, uh, Genesis. But when it comes to the efficiency of the hybrid drivetrain, um, in especially in this vehicle, which is, I think, too heavy for the engine or the engine is too small for this type of vehicle, uh, we, we see this drivetrain work quite efficiently with smaller vehicles like the, um, like the Ionic or the Kona. But in, in this vehicle, I think it's, it needs a bigger engine. Well, yeah, that's been it uh, for Robert. And if you want to see more of him, you can see the electric range test here. And if you generally like what I'm doing, then please subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you soon.